Hello, I'm Timothy Jordan, and this is IO Live. You just saw the developer keynote where Jason and team brought you through the latest updates to our developer products and platforms. Android, Google Assistant, the web, material design, machine learning, Firebase, and AR Core were all discussed. We now have a few special guests joining us to summarize. First up is Dan from the Android Developer Relations team. Okay, Dan, there was a lot in the Android section. What are your highlights? I'm really looking forward to hearing feedback from developers around Android Jetpack and Android Studio 3.2, all part of our plan to make Android development easier, faster, and more testable. Now, Jetpack builds on the foundations of architecture components in the support library to create an easy-to-use toolbox that allows you to craft a single code base that runs on almost all active Android devices. Jetpack's work manager is totally cool. We've long needed a unified API for scheduling constraint-triggered background tasks. While well, navigation combines with Studio's navigation editor to visualize and implement the way apps navigate between screens, easing many developer pain points in the process. And Kotlin is so fun to use, it's more popular than ever, and Jetpack's KTX extensions make it even better. Now, speaking of our tools, the emulator now starts up super fast and supports snapshots. Meanwhile, the Studio and Play teams are rethinking app distribution with app bundles and dynamic delivery, allowing developers to dramatically reduce app size. And this is important because the larger your app gets, the less installs you tend to get. By rebuilding your app as an app bundle, Google Play's new dynamic delivery will only deliver the code and resources a specific device needs, and it's launching for production use today. And one more thing, starting today in our dev channel, Chrome OS will have the ability to securely run Linux apps, which means you can now try Android Studio on Pixelbooks. Thanks, Dan. Next up is Wayne to talk about Android Things and Google Assistant. Hey, Wayne, what's your summary? Well, Timothy, it starts with Android Things graduating this week from developer preview to 1.0, which is really exciting. We're now ready to create production devices with updates to help developers build secure Internet of Things devices. You can use Android Studio and everything you know about Android to write code, then use our console to push updates to your fleet of devices. Jumping over to the Google Assistant, we now have over 500 million Assistant-enabled devices out there. Every developer should be thinking about an assistant action as a companion experience to your main app or website that users can access from a smart speaker, a Wear OS device, or even in the car when they're not using their phone or computer. And you can share state between your apps and your actions easily, personalizing it for users and keeping track of any subscriptions or purchases. It's really easy to get started building with actions on Google using tools such as Dialogflow, which uses machine learning to make building conversations easy. We also introduced some things to help you get lots of people engaged with your experience. Action links are hyperlinks you can use anywhere that point directly into your action and they make it easier to promote your actions. We have action notifications that give you a way to let your users know about new content or features in your assistant action. These are particularly cool because they work on a phone or any assistant device, even if your users don't have your Android app installed. After someone engages with your action, you can now use routine suggestions to prompt them to add your action to their routines, such as waking up in the morning or getting to work. And one last thing to note is built-in intents, which are a neat way of giving the assistant a deeper understanding of what your action can do so it can bring you more traffic. So in summary, lots of new features, and now is a great time to start developing with our actions on Google Platform. Thanks, Wayne. Jumping over to Web, Megan, tell us more about what's been announced. Hi, Timothy. So excited to be here at I.O. to get to meet and talk with all kinds of developers from all over the world. If you're a web developer or just curious about the web, this is the year to find out more. One area we're really excited about is progressive web apps. As you've heard, Service Worker, the API that makes PWAs possible, is now supported on all major browsers. We're also happy that Lighthouse launched version 3.0. As mentioned in the keynote, Lighthouse analyzes your site and tells you how you can improve your user's experience. With 3.0, your performance metrics will be even more precise. Also, I'm personally very excited about AMP and its continued progress in making it easier for developers to build pages that load instantly. We're introducing e-commerce experiences like a full-featured date picker, search autocomplete, and web packaging for URLs. And finally, WebAssembly now has broad support across browsers and devices, making it possible to run high-performance, 
low-level code written in many languages. And that's the web. Bye. Thanks, Megan. Jumping over to material design, Yasmin, what's the latest? Well, Timothy, there's a lot of great updates today. Material Design is a design system that can help you build beautiful, usable products across platforms. And today, we've expanded Material with our biggest ever update to the system, including a new suite of tools that help you at every stage of the design and development process. Material Theming is a new capability of the Material system that enables you to express your brand's unique identity using color, type, and shape consistently across your products. Today, we also release a suite of tools that make it easier to go from design to implementation. The Material Theme Editor helps you create your own branded symbol library and apply global style changes to color, shape, and typography. Currently available for Sketch, you can access the Material Theme Editor by downloading the Material plugin. You can then share that work easily using Gallery, a tool for collaborating on design work, getting feedback, and tracking iterations all in one place. Optimized for Material, Gallery generates interactive red lines, developer documentation, and design parameters for material components. And finally, we want to make this all really easy for you to build and code. So our open source material components for Android, iOS, the web, and Flutter all support material theming today. Very cool. Thanks, Yasmin. Now on to machine learning. Magnus, what's up with ML? Well, Timothy, our vision for AI at Google is to turn the latest technology into products that empower developers and end users. We heard about a few new things, including cloud TPUs. They are now available to everyone. Just head over to g.co slash cloud TPU. AutoML is another exciting area. It automates the creation of machine learning models. Our first widely available release will be AutoML Vision, which makes it possible to recognize images unique to your applications without writing any model code. We're looking forward to bringing AutoML to more machine learning tasks very soon as well. And of course, TensorFlow. We recently announced TensorFlow.js, which brings machine learning to millions of web developers through JavaScript. You can also create new models in the browser or as well on the server side through Node.js. Also, models can be run with the WebGL acceleration. Oh, and we brought TensorFlow to edge devices, including Android and iOS mobile phones with TensorFlow Lite, which also now support Raspberry Pi. In addition, we released MLKit in beta. MLKit is an SDK that brings Google's machine learning capabilities to mobile developers through Firebase. And speaking of Firebase, I'm sure you'll want to hear more from Jen about this topic. <laughs> Thanks, Magnus. Hey, Jen, let's talk Firebase and, of course, MLKit. In the past few months, we've brought Crashlytics, Fabric's flagship crash reporter, into Firebase. With the combination of Crashlytics, performance monitoring, and Google Analytics, Firebase really helps you better understand and improve your apps. I'm also really excited about how we've been introducing ML to Firebase. One example is with Firebase Predictions, which predicts the future behavior of your users, allowing you to take proactive actions to optimize your app. This is something that can be useful for a variety of things, like A-B testing, sending offers to specific users, and changing the difficulty of a game depending on users' retention levels. And of course, as Magnus mentioned, MLKit is now available in public beta. With it, we're bringing ML tech from across Google and making it available to mobile developers for Android and iOS. My favorite API is image labeling, which helps identify objects like trees, dogs, and Google I.O. attendees. And since MLKit is available through Firebase, it's easy to take advantage of the rest of the Firebase platform, like storing your image labels in Cloud Firestore or experimenting with different custom models using A-B testing. Thanks, Jen. OK, one more topic. Hey, Fred, let's talk about augmented reality. You know, I, I first want to start by saying I think augmented reality is one of those really exciting advances in, in mobile computing. It allows us to all interact with digital content and information in the context of the real world. And we can do it on the devices that we have with us every single day in our pockets, at least most of us do. Um, well, there's kind of three things I want to highlight from the keynote, uh, all about AR Core, which is Google's platform for building augmented reality experiences. Uh, first, we heard about SceneForm. It's a brand new 3D framework, uh, physically based renderer that's optimized for mobile, and it really makes it easy for Java developers to build augmented reality applications. Uh, the SDK has everything that you need as a developer to start building those 3D experiences right into your apps. Uh, there's an Android Studio plugin, it's currently in beta, 
and that helps you import and preview 3D assets right in Android Studio and works with your workflow. Uh, we also heard about augmented images. It makes it possible to attach digital content to experiences and experiences to uh, images in the real world. And you know, augmented images it doesn't just detect images, but it lets you uh, continuously attach content appropriately because it attach it gives you the precise uh, location orientation of those images, and then you as a developer place your content right where you want it. And then finally, we heard about uh, cloud anchors, uh, AirCourse cloud anchors are just, I think they're really exciting because they allow you to multiple devices to have like a shared understanding and uh, context of the real world. Uh, so multiple users can get together on their phones and they can see and interact with the same digital content and it's all anchored to the world in exactly the same way. Now, cloud anchors are available for Android and iOS, uh, so developers can build those cross-platform shared AR experiences that we all want to have. And of course, all of these AR core features, they're available for use uh, today. Thanks, Fred. All right, everyone, your first sessions will be starting at the top of the hour. Remember to stay with us after your session ends to get your first look at the sandbox with Florina. She'll be taking you over to the Android Dome to see what's new with Android TV and Android Play. I'm Timothy Jordan, and this is IO Live.